The Igbo social cultural organization Ahanez in Igbo Worldwide is urging all residents of the Southeast to come out every Monday and go about their regular businesses. The group has declared an end to the seated home orders ordered by the indigenous people of Biafra. IPOP had given the orders to stay indoors every Monday until their leader, Mazin Namdekanu, is released from detention. But Ohanez Ndibo Worldwide earlier on Sunday encouraged schools and businesses to open on Mondays. Public affairs analyst Mr. Nick Agule is joining us at this time from Abuja to take a look at this very uh, important situation. Good evening, Mr. Agule. Good evening, and thank you for having me. And uh, good evening to all Nigerians and all the viewers globally. You're welcome. Well, what do you make of this situation? Well, I have not seen um, an official statement from Ohaneze, but you are breaking the news that they have ordered an end to the sit-at-home order ordered by IPOB that subsists in the southeastern states. But one thing is that I don't think Ohaneze has the capacity to end that sit-at-home order, except they get the buy-in of IPOB. If they don't get the buy-in of IPO, I doubt the effectiveness of that sit-at-home order. But on the other hand, if Ohaneze stepping in and ending that sit-at-home order actually results in the sit-at-home order being disrespected by people and actually coming to an end, it will be a good thing for the Southeast. Because I have always queried the value of this sit-at-home order. Because if you look at a typical Southeasterner, he is a businessman. He is a businessman by orientation, such that even if he has a day job, you see him operating a business by the side. Now, if the Southeasterners a businessman by orientation, why then do you order them to sit at home on a Monday morning all through the day? Well, IPOP gave their when, reasons. Mr. Gole, IPOP yeah, gave but, their reasons, uh, which no one is you know, holding brief for, but that is what it's obtaining right now. And the situation now is how to stop this, because as you have pointed out, it's affecting businesses, it's affecting schools in the East. This is not the first time. Matter of fact, just um, had a call with someone from Aba. He's in Aba right now. And I had asked this question to them. Are you going to stop? Are you going to come out tomorrow? And they're saying they've not had, just as you've indicated, from IPOP, you know, as a group telling them that they can come out. Now, what I need to know from you is, as an Igbo man, why do you think it's so difficult for the leaders of the Igbo people to put an end to this? And why is it difficult for them to get the trust of their people? Because this is not the first time, from what I've been told, that the Igbo leaders have come out to say, do not uh, regard the sit-at-home order, come out and do your businesses. But the people are not coming out out of fear. Okay, so first and foremost, before I answer your question, I want to enter a caveat here to say that I am not an Igbo man. I am a chief man from Benue State, from Vandekia Local Government of Benue State, next to Crusher State. Oh. My interest here is as a public affairs analyst and as a Nigerian, hmm. because uh, Nigeria as a country, whichever part of the country is affected in any way, it affects us all. We are in one boat. And if people think that, oh, my own corner of the boat is OK, I don't care what happens in the other corner of the boat. When the boat sinks, everybody is going to sink with the boat. And that is why I have interest in this matter. Before also I answer your question, let me also intervene in the last uh, discussion we had that if you are agitating, 
and you want to take actions to force the hands of the person that you are you are you are requesting for setting privileges or rights from in this case ipop seeking the federal government of nigeria to take certain steps when you take actions the actions are expected to be punitive mm. to the person that you are requesting from you don't punish yourself because if you look at the case of the niger delta the niger delta militants were attacking oil facilities and they knew that as they attack oil facilities is going to be injurious to the government of Nigeria because that is where the government of Nigeria makes money. And so there, that kind of agitation, you will understand it. But how can you be agitating from the federal government and you are telling people to sit at home? So when they sit at home, how is that injurious to the federal government? How does that impact on the people in Abuja that you are demanding one thing or the other from? So for me, this kind of agitation makes no sense. If at all, I probably can look for something else that is going to hurt those in Abuja to pull them to the, to the table or and twist their arms into giving I probably what they are looking for. Now, go, going to your question, I would say that I probably is a very brutal organization. When people disobey their sit-at-home orders, they have been maiming and killing people. Even though they come out to deny, which has resulted in the unknown government or unknown no man. But who else can be doing this? The fingerprints of IPOP are all over these killings. Because these killings are happening when IPOP's orders are disobeyed. And if IPOP say they are not the one, who else can be doing it? So, well, no one can tell. <laughs> no, no one to. can tell for sure until, you know, there's evidence. What is true, but sometimes you are looking at circumstantial evidence. Sometimes you are looking at matters more pragmatically to say who can come to the Southeast, dominate the security in the Southeast, and be doing killings if IPOP does not have the support of that. But we can leave that aside mm. and we'll look at uh, Ohaneze. Ohaneze, they want to end this sit at home order. They need to get IPOP on their side. They need to sit with IPOP. They need to make uh, concessions to IPOP. They need to make offers to IPOP, whatever they want to do, whether it's a political solution or not, they need to come to that to that agreement. Because Ohanese was in the villa a few days ago. And this statement that they have issued today may be as a result of the outcome of the meeting they had in the villa. Because they were in the villa, they sought the release of mm. the IPOP leader, uh, Mazimna Di Kano. It is possible that the villa told them that for us to release Mazimna Di Kano, these sit at home orders must be arrest. And if that is the case, then, then IPOP have an opportunity here. They can engage, I, uh, I mean, Ohanese has an opportunity here. They can engage IPOP and say, look, we are at the verge of releasing your leader, but this is what you need to give for you to be able to get that. Because in conflict resolution, there must always be a give and take. All right. The winner well, cannot take all. Mm -hmm. You just brought me to my next question, which is this meeting they had with the president uh, regarding the release of the IPOB leader, Namdi Kanu. Do you see his release um, changing the situation in the East? Do you see dousing the tensions in the Southeast? It depends on the negotiations that will happen prior to that release. Because I know that the federal government is empowered to release him. I mean, the Attorney General of the Federation can, can release anybody from prosecution. In fact, when people are jailed and they are, they are in jail, that means convicted and jailed, the government can also grant the amnesty. So it is within the powers of the government to release uh, Namdi Kanu. But 
whether his release is going to impact positively on the situation in the southeast is dependent on the negotiations that will happen prior to that release. If the federal government of Nigeria, and I know the federal government of Nigeria, will want to extract certain concessions from both Ohaneze and IPO before they release him, if they are able to get those concessions, they will release him. And I believe that those concessions will better the security situation in the southeast because they will definitely have to talk about the stoppage in the sit-at-home order, the stoppage in the violence, and then they will have to stop up. Uh, it will have to, uh, to have to be about stoppage of attacking of federal government institutions like uh, INEC offices, you know, security formations and all of that. So if all that stops, why Nadi Kanu is a free man, then of course it's going to positively impact on the situation in the southeast. All right, thank you so much, Mr. Nick Agole. Um, we'll, we'll just keep our fingers crossed and see how that goes, whether Namdi Kanu will be released. We'll also see the kind of negotiation that's taking place, if at all, between IPOB and the Ohanese Ndibo. So tomorrow is Monday. We'll see what happens. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, Maureen. We hope for the best for this country. Definitely. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.